Good morning. My name is Charlie Lorenz. We're here today to introduce a show called The Abalone Hunter. Van Damme State Beach is one of the most popular beaches along the northern coast of California because of its ease of entry, mostly because of the rocks behind me, as you see, create a really nice uh, protection against rough water and can make the cove very protected ocean and calm ocean for ease of entry. Um, the popular place here to go diving for most people is to take their kayaks or swim out to the far reefs behind me here, as you can see, especially on low tides like what we have today. It's very, very shallow out there and tons of abalone. There is a tiny little rock that you can see exposed here. That is a small little reef there, and there are some abs, probably just barely legal size too, but it is a short swim and they are easy to get to. But if you do want to go for the larger abs, you definitely want to go out to the further rocks. The further out you go, you'll start finding more in the range of seven and a half, eight inch abs, a little bit deeper too. Of course, if you get into the real deep water, that's where you're going to be finding the bigger eight, eight, possibly even some nine inch abalone out there. The most popular place for people to go diving here in Van Dam is actually going to be those rocks right there, especially on the low tides very very shallow believe it or not and tons and tons of abalone. We have showers here so the divers can rinse off their gear, their wetsuits, get the sand out of their hair if necessary too. A little river here coming along the way is kind of convenient for um, especially kayakers who could put their kayaks into the river and go out to the ocean versus dragging along the sand. Where did you get your abalone? Out here in the rocks? Yeah, from the rocks. Yeah? Yeah. Really, was it really low tide? I mean, yeah, were you swimming or yeah. how low? <laughs> here, here, here. Oh, yeah. When people talk about Van Dam, they talk about what is called the keyhole. Right behind me there, that little, that big rock with the little arch in there is a tiny little cave, actually. But right in that channel there, on a minus tide particularly, it could be very shallow from anywhere from ankle depth to up to your waist. Great for a lot of people that are going out to rock pick. But for divers, on the higher tide could be anywhere from six to eight feet in depth. Not too deep for diving and there are tons of abalone there as well. But it is a fun place to go visit, especially on a kayak because if you try to swim, well, I think you can see it's a long way to swim. bumping the bar up against the shell as you're pushing the ab bar down. See how I'm trying to pry the meat, pulling it downward away from the shell as I'm trying to scrape the ab bar up against the shell as I'm pulling. You can hear it starting to rip apart as I'm pushing down, pulling away, and pop. Now the ab is pulled off. Okay. Now don't try to rip it all the way off because sometimes you'll end up with a little bit of a mess. You'll end up with the guts possibly tearing off with the whole ab, in which case then it's a little bit more difficult to take the guts off. It can be done, but the easier way now is to go by the apex side of the ab now and lift the abalone. See, I'm lifting the abalone. You can see the button. We're part of the muscle. This part's called the muscle. The white part, which we're after, is the muscle. And here's the, the gonads right here. And the gonads are still attached to the abalone. But the easier method of taking the guts or the um, gonads away from the ab is simply taking your hands, see how I'm holding the ab up, and I'm forcing my fingers or the web part of my hands right here down and into the guts right here. And as I'm pulling, I'm lifting and pushing at the same time basically tearing the guts off. And there we go. And just keep on pulling until at least most of the guts come off with it. And you can see here the guts are here and you got at least 90% of the guts came out with it this time. But if 
if you're lucky, a lot of times most of the guts will come off with the whole ab. Okay. Now, the next step, because these guys are so slimy, it is recommended to rinse these abs and your hands as often as possible because you can see you get pretty slimy, things get slippery. This is where people make mistakes and slice their hands because it's so slippery. So. In early months of our season here, April, May, we don't have a lot of kelp. As you can see behind me, there is some kelp out there. But here pretty soon, in June and July, the kelp grows so fast that it's going to get very, very thick. So keep in mind that tides do make a big difference in diving here at Van Dam. If you're going to be diving on a low tide, this kelp is going to be sitting like a carpet on the, on the surface. It's going to be very difficult to swim through. If you're on a kayak, it might be a little different. It might be easier to go over the kelp in the kayak. But generally speaking, some divers would prefer to dive on a higher tide where the kelp is going to stand straight up like this and much easier to weave through the kelp versus on a low tide when it's a carpet and trying to crawl over the kelp. Again, this time of year, as you can see behind me, kelp is not too bad. Beautiful day here. Department of Fishing Game, how are you yeah. doing? Good, we're, thank you. Uh, checkpoint, we're checking for apple in your fish. You got any on board? So we got a, a whole new culture and a whole lot of people that use abalone in their culture and not necessarily for food. Most of this abalone gets dried, ground into powder and sold medicinally by the gram. So one abalone, a poacher might get, who's selling illegal selling abalone, he might get up from $50 to $100 per abalone depending on the size. By the time that abalone is, goes to Hong Kong and gets sold by the gram, it might be fetching $2,000. This is where it's at, it's in Fort Bragg. This is their phone number. If you don't get anything in the okay. mail, you need yeah. to call the number, okay? okay? I'm gonna let you keep your dive gear, all right? <laughs> okay, but I'm keeping your abalone. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. okay. The lights in, you understand about the muscles? Yeah. Yeah. During quarantine. Oh. Yeah. Oh. This is the red tides. They, they're, they're advising, they just, the health department's advising that you should eat them. The abalone are fine, but the, the mussels aren't, aren't good this time. Okay? One of the many features that's fun about uh, Van Dam is there's so many different places to go diving. Earlier we talked about the reef out front, which is commonly known as the keyhole. But right behind me over here, you can see the island and many, many rocks that are jutting out. Very, very shallow again over here. Today would be a perfect day to go diving out there because normally along the Mendocino coast here, we have a current that comes along from the north heading to south. And our winds are coming from the north heading to south usually. And if you were to dive on the south side of the beach, heading back home toward the parking lot, you would have a headwind generally. Today, we have south winds. So if you were to go diving over here on a day where there's south winds, you would have the wind behind you as you're coming back home. Really nice way to come back home and much safer too. So keep that in mind when you're out there planning your dives at Van Dam or anywhere along the Mendocino Coast. Check the weather. Which way is the wind coming from? The north, west, south? It all makes a difference of which side of the beach you're going to dive, whether you're going to dive north side of the beach or the south side of the beach. In any case, this place over here with the island and all the rocks, again on a low tide, much shallower to dive and many, many abalone out there too.